creative obstacle number eight and for many people number one perfectionism i'm joanna and this is the series where in 21 days i am overcoming 21 creative obstacles the weirdest things have been happening with this video first of all i had to record it four times which never happens to me anymore these days it's just one time and i'm done the files kept disappearing. I couldn't upload it. My computer ran out of memory. There was a force bigger than me that was trying to prove to me that my limiting belief from the past is still the truth, that I don't deliver, that I'm not consistent, and that I don't do what I promised because it was my limiting belief in the past. And in situations like this, it is, I think, the default that we push more and we try to prove to ourselves. So if something doesn't work, that we are pushing even more to just get it done. But then I recalled this was the path I already took in the past, and it only led me to burnout. And because I learned the lesson in the past, I knew that the next thing that I need to do is to let go and surrender. Now, what good does it do to surrender if the thing is still not done? The work that I did with myself yesterday helped me see that the internal change affects the external change. Even though the video was still not done and not posted, I had a different perspective on it. There are delays, big delays happening on a big scale affecting millions of people and we still need to deal with those delays. And why do we beat ourselves up for those smaller things? I don't want this video to be too long. I'm just going to give one example from the visual arts. And the lesson for perfectionism in this case came from my kitchen cabinet. I was putting away the dishes and I was holding this nice pottery bowl, ceramic bowl, and I looked at it, admiring it. And then I imagined that I created this pottery. As soon as I imagined that I created it, I started finding so many things that were wrong with it. If I created it, I would not even sell it because I would be ashamed of those mistakes but when i was a customer buying this bowl i didn't see those mistakes and then i shifted my lens back to the consumer knowing that somebody else created this bowl and again it was perfect this is how i would use this lesson in the future or actually i already started using it in the past i was creating a sequence of lessons and I got stuck. And then I imagined that a person I admire, somebody really smart, is creating this e-course. And then things immediately started going easier. So I would call this technique a first degree of separation. Brenna Brown says that we believe that when we are perfect and when we do things perfectly, we will avoid judgment. And the truth is, no, my dear, you are not going to avoid judgment. When you do things perfectly, you are going to be judged for doing things perfect or too perfect for some people. So it's just better to relax, keep your standards, right? But relax and create without that worry because other people are busy judging themselves. To me, perfectionism is not about paying attention to details as we do the work. It is about how we talk to ourselves during the work. I created more videos on perfectionism, so if you are interested, I will link them below in the description. What about you? Do you deal with perfectionism during your creative work? What is the hardest part for you about perfectionism? If you like this video, please click the like and subscribe, and I will see you soon.